Good evening, and welcome back to another unsolicited review that you probably won't watch. Tonight, I am joined by the Boo Crew. I've got Josh Reviews Incorporated rocking on beard, and my boy Brandon Syme, who's now sporting mutton chops. We decided we go with a little bit of a more hairy theme tonight, as it is not my hairiest adventure, but this is Fear Street Part 3, 1666. So, I mean, yeah, I, the entire town of Sunnydale was cursed. I'm sorry, Shady Side. Sunnydale was the asshole. Shady always cursed. Sorry, we're a week behind, but it's not my fault for yeah. once. It's Brandon's, because he didn't watch it till after we filmed part two. So, guys, let's talk about Fear Street. 1666 picks up right where Fear Street 1978 left off. We've got Dina. Yeah. Dina's holding Sarah Fear's hand, and she does the, <laughs> and all of a sudden the hand goes. Oh, how dare you! No, it didn't do that, but now, essentially she bled on the hand, which, why does the skeleton make people bleed, guys? So, when it was revealed that, it, um, when you bleed, it means that, supposedly, it was thought to bleed that Sarah's thought. I'm believing now, Sarah isn't the witch, and it, that means that good is close. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I really like the fact, like, the whole, like, cinematography in this movie. I thought it was really well, like, recorded. Like, yeah. everything looks really beautiful in its own disgusting way. The way, the way 1666 was portrayed and how the homes were portrayed is very historically aesthetic to what early federals would have been like in America. That, and I also, okay, the thing that I really liked is, like, the whole scene in the church... With uh, the guy that was had the missing eyeballs. Oh, the pastor. That was hardcore. Yeah, that was, yeah. That was, hardcore. Yeah, that was, it was great. Yeah. There was a it lot was of great. rich lore. I like that they used the old actors and actresses from the other ones to portray people there. Yeah. Um, I figured it out. So, probably uh, the time that she had been already caught, you know, with her girlfriend, the pastor's daughter. She was talking to what's his face, and he's like, "One does only invite the devil in. He must extend the hand." Yeah. And the moment he said that, I was like, "Oh my god, it's him! He's the one." Dalton, Dalton, please tell me that you're lying. I had the same moment. Like, okay, I did too. I was like, "Oh, that's it. He's the big bad." Even though I do like how he was so like sadistic and twisted, like you know when he was chasing Sarah. 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 Here's my thing, like. It was hardcore, and I was a little pissed I figured it out right then and there. But it was a good lead-up, honestly. Here's my real biggest complaint. So, I you know it was like the middle America, and like I thought it was interesting the town's name was Union. So, how close did Sheriff Good live to that mall? Because, remember, that was all in one area. And the mall was connected to his house, right? Through that the storm drain? Yeah. My only other real, real, real big complaint here, and I just like it all, is this. So, when Sam bled on Sarah's bones, all those monsters came after her in 1994, right? And then we have this whole thing where it's like, Dina bled on the bones, but all of a sudden she has a flashback and realizes what it was all about. Like, that just bugged me, you know? Like, how did Sheriff... I, I mean, I get Sheriff Good went to the scene and saw they disturbed the bones, but still. It is kind of confusing. There's just a big plot hole there for me. It's like, okay, so they want to kill Sam because she disturbed the grave, but realistically, Sheriff Good's got him after him. But if he just killed the Halloween slasher guy, does he need another sacrifice? It's a, it's a one person every, like, 16 to 20 years. Yeah. So, I don't get that. That bugs me a lot. It, it is annoying. Oh, they could be like, oh, God, we found a witch. Oh, they could have been like, right? But they never I mean, told the police they found that witch, or else the body would have been confiscated. Yeah. Well, I will admit, I really did like the fact that they did bring back all of the other killers. And, like, actually yeah. talked about them a little bit. You know? I didn't get enough. I was really hoping to see more about the weird aardvark mask guy in, like, baseball. That's the one person I'm on about. The one, okay, I like the fact that they actually started explaining about the girl with the scissors. Ruby Lane? You mean, uh, you mean yeah. Lily? Ruby yeah. Lane. Ruby Lane, my bad. Again, Sarah's flashback episode was fine. 
I think my favorite part is when they cut to 1994, part two. I was like, oh, yeah. shit, movie to movie. Yeah. And I'll be honest here, I do love 1666, like, part, but I still think that second half of 1994 was, like, the best part of that movie. Bro, also, I just love the moment where he saves their brothers, like, good is evil, right? So, like, yes. Good is actually is evil, but he's evil, he's evil, so. No, that was great. Yeah, great plan work. <clears throat> no, honestly, I love how they pull up on the dude that the nerdy brother saved in part one with the paper clip. Yeah. He's like, hey, what up? Was kill Sheriff good? <laughs> He's like, sure, why not? He's hilarious in that. Again, my only real complaints is I feel like 1666 stitched them together but did not do a really good job on its final patchwork because, again, there's just some continuity errors for me. Well, I right. think they could have done at the ending, like, any credits, they could have explored maybe a little bit more about the killer's stories. Well, at the very end, we saw the spell book got pulled, which means it's not over yeah. yet. Yeah. That's why I suggest, I'm suggesting that maybe the son of her, his brother was um, the, uh, the next chosen. Um, the, director wa- the director went on a quote in an interview and said she wants to create the MCU of horror with the Fear Street series. Good. Uh, you know what I believe, though, personally? The next series, like, I mean, so The Babysitter, which is a standalone series by Stein, is getting a TV show. Mm-hmm. I believe the next Fear Street work we're going to get is The Cheerleaders, The First Evil. That was what I was just about to say. Yeah, yeah. I hope they do that. That or the Cat- Catalina Chronicles. I think those are one of our next two options, personally. I was say, but I know they probably wouldn't do it, but uh, it'd be really cool, like, if they made a Christmas special and they did the Silent Night trilogy. They could. They could indeed. Because those, those are some of my favorite Fear Street books. Again, I think they did a really good job, and I love how Fear Street's what saved her in the very end. The books themselves are what stopped her from dying. Yeah, yeah the body vest thing. That was cool. Yeah, that was good. That was good. But my, like I just said, I feel like the patchwork was shoddy, and I feel like there was more to it we didn't fully get, and that just bugs me. I, I really Wait, feel we... bad for the killers, because at the end of the day, all the more actually normal people... That were a curse, yeah. literally, yeah. possessed. Can we talk about one thing that kind of drove me nuts about this movie? Sure, good guy way too often for a kill wife. What do you mean? Like, stabbing the eye, really? That, that's it? He was stabbing the eye, I thought. Yeah, stabbing the eye, not shot the eye. Stabbing the eye, whatever. Who is so anticlimactic? I was like, you, you hype don't, you don't get it, do you? You hype up this guy. I know what Josh is going to say, an eye for an eye. Eye for an eye, but that's not what I'm trying to say. The reason why he, he died that way is because he touched the heart thingy, whatever, right? I know, I remember but... Remember what Sarah Fierce said, I know the truth. I know the truth. I'm going to be the one on you and your ancestors. The truth is, you'll see me and you'll know the truth. Like, you'll see me throughout all the time. Basically, Sasha is the one who killed Yeah. The last thing he sees before he dies is the truth. Right. I'm, no, I'm just saying, I just wish they did a little bit more of a graphic kill because every other kill in this movie was super graphic. Like the pig eating the other baby kids. That was pretty gross. <laughs> the whole series has this like big... I get it. The big bad should have had a gruesome death. I get what you're saying. I do. Yes. I'm just going to say this, though. Here's my biggest complaint. I think it would have been gruesome if the actual plan to when they dump the, his, her blood on her, um, the killer to kill him, would have been pretty cool. For sure. So, um, overall... King, you know, I'm out of time for Josh, overall, give me a quick thought. What was your favorite scene, and, what, and out of all three movies, where would you place this between one, two, and three as being the best? Okay, um, I'll go after I gotta say, it's when, uh, the brother finally is like, I, I'm gonna fight back, and he ends up holding his own for a little bit against Ruby, and then Ruby starts to, to break his own. But, that's not my favorite, and I have say a favorite scene, it's from 66, and it's the scene where Sarah finds out about Solomon's, um, who Solomon really is. Just the level of betrayal that's here on her face is just priceless. 
So Brandon, what was your favorite scene? For this movie, I'll be honest, it's probably the pig kill. It, no, actually, no, I'll take that back. It's probably the church scene. Where Preacher. He's walking and the guy's like tapping and like his eyeballs are popped out. That's, that's a good scene, too. That is just. Oh my god, my grandpa hated that. Yeah. He watched this movie with me. Not a bad choice. I think my favorite's when they start spraying everybody with the glow in the dark blood. I thought that was cool. That was cool. Yeah. yeah. That was my favorite scene. Like when she's like, tag, you're a bitch, get carried. Josh, what would you rate this on a scale of 1 to 10? I give it a 10. And I'm putting this in the selection of movie. I think it's the best movie. Alright, so you're rating this not only a 10, but the best of the three. Yes. Brandon? I'll give it an 8. I think it is great. But, like, we've talked about, there are a couple continuity issues. There's a few things that kind of made me go... Overall, I still think the second one's my favorite one. So. Alright. Uh, and I'm also with you on that, Brandon. I'm going to do a 7. And I also agree, out of all of them, I enjoyed Part 2 the most. Because, at, in my personal opinion, Part 2, the story wasn't broken yet. I like that Sarah Fear turned out to not be evil. But yeah. people have touched the bones. Izzy touched the bone. Yeah. Again, and he even revived her, so... Uh... I guess my thing is, is like... Just the fact that, you know, <sighs> Sheriff Good was the bad guy the entire time. I think that's cool. But I also really like the fact that at the end, that Sunnydale starts getting the bad luck. Like the guy pulling out of the driveway and gets run over that's by the man. Yeah, that, was, that was the mayor. Yeah, it was hilarious. And if you don't get it though, but it's 1686. So later days, later be shady signs. Yeah. Where Solomon lives, is will be later become sunny day. Yeah, I know. All right, so I just did the math on this. It scored a weird 8.3333333. So we're just gonna round that down to an eight. Okay. okay. So overall, okay. the movie scored an eight. I don't, I don't think any of them are bad at all. I think they're all good. I just think, like, Part 3 kind of had a few issues. Part 3 made the most sense of the, that lore, but by doing that, it started. It brought up more questions than answers. I do yeah. like that we, we, went, we went back to the mall. I like that. But again, it just doesn't make sense. Like, why the fact that Sheriff Good was dealing with... He killed, he killed the one dude who had the Halloween mask on. That's it. He shouldn't have had any more. It should have been done. It should have waited for his next kid. Yeah. You know? Well, actually, I think he killed two people. 1778. That's... Remember, Sheriff Good's dad just died. I'm assuming that Sheriff Good's dad was, was the person before him. And his first time ever shooting to kill someone was 1778. That was just like... My guess, fantastic. Sheriff's Good's dad is the one who did Ruby Lane. Sheriff Good is the one who did... Tommy. Tommy. And then he did another one, you're right, he did that new guy. The kid with the Halloween mask. So again, he had no more reasons. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I get why he put Sam on there. He was cleaning up loose ends, I guess. Yeah. But still, I just don't know, man. Again, the problem is, when you set rules, you can't break the set rules. And they broke their own rules. Like, don't set rules if you're not going to follow them. I'm like with Brandon, I, I enjoyed 78 the most. Camp. So, I'll, I'll be, Friday 13th. I'm, I'm going to review these, like, on my own channel, too, like, soon, just, like, to get, like, my thoughts on all the movies. I'm going to do a trilogy review, so... Yeah. All right, well, here's what I we're going to do. We're going to pretty much final statements, Josh. Just thought it was a good movie. Um, great period piece and great return to 1994. Brandon, the last final thoughts? That was a good movie. Glad that Fear Street was a lot better than any of the Goosebumps movies. Keep it up. I myself agree. I feel like we saw the real potential an Arnold Stein book can have when put in the right hands of the correct director. And, you know, they had fun with it. They know that there's a lot of fans, and this was a love letter to fans. And honestly, I hope to see more from the Fear Street verse or something. Just. Oh my god, please don't ruin new Goosebumps, guys. We, we, don't f*** it up. We already have... Now that this is out, there's no reason to backstroke. Sony, take the notes. Yeah. Alright, with that being said, this is the Boo Crew talking about the Fear Street Trilogy. This was part three. It's out late. I don't give a shit. I work 
I work a lot, so if you don't like it, and why are you still watching this? Give me money, Nintendo. <clears throat> okay. Don't get money from Nintendo. Bad Nintendo. Give me money. I want the new Switch OLED Nintendo. Give it to me. <laughs> Come on. All right. That's it. Fear Street. We're closing. Hang on. We're closing the book on this Fear Street saga. Ha ha ha. Look forward to people talking about it that are here with me. Brandon and Josh will review it on their own. Check out our multiple podcasts because we keep making more of them because we're insane. There's three of them between the three of us, so... Yeah. I'm your host with the most, Goosebumps Dan, and I've got no toast. But do you have burritos? Is, is that an insult because of Mexican, or... What? No, no, no. It's supposed to be like a play on words because, you know, the whore burrito and... Oh, shit. You would have been better off just saying, hey, guess what? The whore burrito finale for season three is coming up, like, next week, man. You know what? I don't need this. Sooner or go. Well, hey, man, what am I doing here? Evil demonic magic from a burrito made of horrible things. Oh, so I'm not dead? No, but you might as well help me do this outro since you're here now. Thanks for watching Season of the Glitch. <sighs> but that, that's, that's not what we're talking about right now. Oh. Thanks for watching my dead series. <sighs> give, me, give me back the burrito. I, I want the burrito back. Come back, burrito! If you already haven't subscribed to this channel or mine, you should do so now. You should also subscribe to the mildly messed up burrito of horror and also Season of the Glitch. Huh, that was, um, that was actually pretty good. Subscribe to my canker. You ruined it. Get, get the f*** out. But I... No, get out. We're done. It's done. I'm closing. Goodbye.